Uh, I'm going to give a, a a brief overview of some of the energy uh, work that we've been doing in Midwest dairy and swine barns here at the, the University of Minnesota. And it really started as a way to help farmers uh, sort of improve the energy efficiency and reduce the carbon footprint uh, of their operations. Uh, so first, I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the energy consumption that we've uh, done in uh, swine facilities here in the Midwest. You can see there is a, we do have a, a peer-reviewed research publication. If you ever want to check that out, at the bottom, it'll give you a lot more details about uh, everything that we've uh, done. So <clears throat> we really looked at six barns uh, that were kind of very representative of pork production systems here in the Midwest. We looked at two breed to wean barns, uh, you know, 60 to 90,000 wean pigs per year. We had uh, two nursery barns, a little bit different in size. One was 3,000 head, the other was 12,000. And then we looked at two finishing barns, um, different in the number of hogs marketed. And you also note that one of the barns, uh, barn A, was tunnel ventilated and barn B was curtain sided. And uh, we'll see what the results look like. So we'll have to remember that one was tunnel ventilated and the other was curtain sided. So if you look at the breed, <clears throat> breed to wean results, so we put sensors on all of the motors, electrical outlets, you name it in, in all of these barns to determine the energy load of uh, production systems. You'll notice that <clears throat> in these breed to wean barns, about 45% is from heat lamps to heat baby pigs. <clears throat> and that's where most of the energy consumption is coming from. Obviously, ventilation and cooling is another big component of these breed to wean barns. Uh, you'll notice at the top where we have listed the, the barns, we have how much uh, kilowatt hours uh, that these barns use per day. And some of them are, are a little bit different. Uh, obviously, one has many more uh, head in the barn, so it's going to use a little bit more energy. But on a percentage basis, using about the same for heat lamps. <clears throat> in the nursery barns, we kind of find similar uh, output. Obviously, a little bit less energy used in nursery barn A compared to B but about 40% of the energy uh, in these barns is from ventilation. So fans basically is what, what they're using. Now, nursery barn A had a lot higher percentage of miscellaneous uh, energy loads. And that there's a lot of things that go into miscellaneous energy loads. It's, we kind of grouped a lot of these things together if they didn't necessarily fit in sort of large categories. But you'll notice that, you know, a lot of people think that lights are are a big energy consumer, not as much in these uh, nursery barns. Uh, ventilation was the number one. So what about the finishing <clears throat> barns? Remember, barn A was tunnel ventilated. Barn B was curtain sided. So you'll notice that there is a lot less energy consumed in finishing barn B, about 32 kilowatts per day compared to barn A. However, on a percentage basis within those barns, uh, barn A used about 60% of the energy was for ventilation. So fans, remember, and then barn B was 72% was from ventilation. So they use a lot of uh, energy for ventilation in these finishing barns, and that's the largest consumer. Feeding systems, one had a more automated feeding system, so you get a lot more energy used in the feeding system compared to from one to the other. But again, ventilation was the one that was consuming most of the energy in these hog barns. <clears throat> so once we, we, we first started with um, the swine barns, and then we moved on to uh, dairy farms to look at uh, energy loads, uh, you know, this has been done obviously in the past, but dairy farm, uh, you know, in the early 80s, 90s, but dairy farms have changed quite considerably from just even 10 years ago as far as uh, how the barns are built and energy consumed. So we looked at four uh, commercial freestall dairies in, in West Central Minnesota. We also included 
um, an, an additional farm, which is our University of Minnesota research farm where I'm at. It's a 300 cow grazing dairy. So you'll see that as farm E. Uh, but farm A was 9,500 cows cross ventilated uh, with a, a large milking uh, parlor. Farm B was sort of unique, had 300 cows, but they had uh, Laley milking robots. So this was actually getting at a how much energy does robot dairies use. Uh, farm C was 200 cows, kind of regular freestyle barn, but 20% of their milk was diverted to an on-site creamery that they have on farm. <clears throat> and Farm D was very typical of a Midwest dairy farm, 400 cows, double eight herringbone parlor, but they also had a manure composting system that they used on their farm that uh, composted the solids and they used that solids for bedding. So we put sensors on all these electrical boxes. These are kind of pictures about what we did. So we we had almost 300 uh, sensors installed on all of these dairy farms where we collected uh, the data to see uh, where they were consuming all of the energy. And we, um, we, we know we put it on every single motor and electrical unit uh, in these barns. So this is an idea of a uh, farm A, a large 9,500 cow dairy. Uh, you'll notice that fans, so this was cross ventilated barn. Uh, fans are the largest consumer of uh, electricity on these farms. You'll notice the kind of pink shaded one is the vet room that also consumes a lot of energy, especially in the winter time. So that's where they do a lot of uh, uh, calving, a lot of hoof trimming in the winter. Uh, they're milking fresh cows in there. So they have a lot of heaters for people and cows in there. So the, the where the vet room is, the energy goes up quite considerably. Um, manure system across time was about the same. Uh, you know, lights, milk cooling was pretty consistent uh, across the time, but fans uh, were the largest consumer. Uh, so barn B, this was um, the uh, Laley robots. Um, you'll notice that in the wintertime, heaters are the biggest uh, reason for electrical consumption, especially up here in, in the upper Midwest where we have snow and cold. Uh, people turn a lot of heaters on, space heaters, uh, you name it, block heaters on engines. Uh, so that consumes a lot of energy in the wintertime. Um uh, Fans in the summertime were also the biggest uh, consumer of electricity. If you look at the robots, they were pretty consistent across time. Uh, six six Laleys, uh, and they used about the same amount of energy uh, no matter what sort of month it was. Farm C, this was the 200 cow with a creamery on site. Again, what we see is that in the wintertime, we all turn our heaters on. Uh, and they use a lot of energy. And in the summertime, we turn a lot of fans on to cool cows. So it's all about kind of uh, in the wintertime, people comfort in the summertime, uh, cow comfort. So on this dairy, we also used, uh, they probably used a little more uh, energy for milk cooling uh, based on their on-site creamery that they were using. Uh, this is Farm D, a regular uh, 400 cow uh, freestyle barn. Uh, in the summertime, late summertime, uh, fans, ventilation uh, were the largest consumer. Th uh, this farm also used a lot of energy for lights. Uh, these were non-LED lights, so they used a lot of uh, energy for their lights. And the manure composting system was pretty consistent across time um, and used about 10,000 kilowatt hours per month. So it uh, is a large consumer of energy on these farms. And this is a grazing dairy. This is our uh, University of Minnesota grazing dairy where uh, milk cooling is probably the biggest uh, uh, consumer of uh, electricity and then heaters in the wintertime. So uh, lots of heaters to make things uh, uh, not freeze. Not much for fans. On a grazing dairy, you don't get much use for fans only in the milking parlor. Uh, this gives you an overview of, of all of the farms together. Um, Basically, you'll note that the biggest consumer of energy on farms are fans for cow cooling, ventilation, and milk cooling. 
uh, those are, are in, well, end heaters in the winter time. So they use a lot of energy and uh, these are what we found to be the biggest consumers. Uh, if you look at these uh, farms quickly based on uh, comparing them, you'll notice that if you look at it from a milk production standpoint, uh, the farms are quite variable in the amount of kilowatt hours used per uh, uh, kilogram of milk production um, that these farms generate. Uh, when you look at it on a per cow basis, obviously these farms, they fluctuate a lot, 33 kilowatt hours per cow in the grazing dairy and 98 kilowatt hours in, in the robot dairy. And a lot of it has to do with fans and ventilation. The farms that consume more energy have more fans and ventilation going. So in summary, uh, these are kind of the focus areas uh, that we want to uh, focus on in swine production systems. We want to find more efficient piglet heating systems, uh, obviously improve ventilation systems, better maintenance on them to uh, not consume as much energy. And at Minnesota, we've uh, explored reduced nocturnal temperatures. So turning the temperature down at night for nursery and finishing pigs to reduce that energy uh, use. And the dairy focus areas uh, are ventilation. You know, ventilation is number one consumer of electricity on farms and trying to improve ventilation uh, will, will be the number one in reducing energy consumption. Obviously, if you properly size them, have good settings and maintenance of fans, you can save 15% in energy consumption. Uh, lights, converting them to LED using timers or photoelectric sensors. Obviously, lights are variable across farms. Some farms have LEDs, some do not. Uh, and lights can be a, a big consumer depending on the farm. And obviously, block heaters are number one uh, in uh, for especially in the winter time uh, to to prevent a lot of things from freezing. And with that, we'll we'll we've sort of moved on. Our our goal is to sort of make energy efficiency, and and uh, here at our farm, we're trying to incorporate renewable energy, and we've explored renewable energy with the four dairies that we explored as well, and looking at manure digesters and solar and and all of that. So that's where we're sort of moving into the next picture uh, with these farms. And here, this is our farm with some solar grazing of of solar panels. And we thank all the uh, funding that's provi been provided for uh, all of our research studies on these swine and dairy farms. And if you uh, have any other questions, uh, comments, feel free to email me or, or look up on our website and uh, give me a, a call and we can certainly talk about it.